So we've all been there. You have this great two sentence idea, but how do you turn that into a two trilogy, seven and a half movie, billion dollar book deal? I'm glad you asked and I'm here to help you out. Welcome to the Miranda Reads School of Writing. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to write a hit YA book in five easy steps. Let's get started. Step one, orphanhood. Now this might seem a little obvious to our experienced YA readers and outwriters out there, but I do want us all to be on the same page when we're beginning this YA book. And step one is always offing the parent. Kill, maim, dismember, vanish without a trace. It truly does not matter how. You just need to get those creative juices flowing and those parents out of here. Sometimes you can get away with emotionally neglectful or abusive, but honestly, just get those parents out of here. Step two, sympathy. Always kickstart your book by kicking your orphan, preferably when she's down. Making your unloved orphan run from a toxic environment or stifling environment is not only a great conversation starter when she runs into other street smart orphans, but it also garners a ton of sympathy from your audience. Now on the subject of sympathy and empathy, it is important and bear with me here to make your main character ugly, but ugly pretty. Essentially, she has to be so ugly that all the little children reading your book can relate but not so ugly that Hollywood casts a troll to play her in the movie adaption. And remember, she can never be so ugly that your generic love interests aren't insanely attracted to her. So now that she's ugly and alone in this world, let's give her some personality. I'm gonna just throw some darts at the personality wall and let's see, humble, clumsy, sweet, a little bit sassy, naive and adorably stupid. This sounds like a fabulously well-rounded main character. You do have to make sure she is so humble that when she's given clean clothes or food without mold on it, her eyes well up in tears. At one point, you are absolutely legally obligated to give her an Oscar-worthy gown for some unimportant and really made up reason your main character may feel kind of like mixed feelings about getting trussed up, but once she gets in front of the mirror, beautiful. Then never mention again. No matter how successful your main character is, she must be absolutely miserable with her success. Crying every few chapters is allowed, bawling every other page is preferred. Now that your humbly ugly, emotionally neglected orphan is feeling extra unstable, Time to hit that meat of the story, the love triangle. Step three, the love triangle. So this is an oft unappreciated but absolutely essential aspect of writing a good YA book. A few quick notes here, it is completely acceptable and honestly preferred if your main character is ugly, skinny, clumsy, pretty. However, these men and these love aspects they have to be strapping fine specimens of the species. Ripped and buff, no skinny mini is allowed. Option A is gonna be our homespun hero. He's gonna be tanned, broad shoulders. He's gonna know the main character for many, many years. The two of them can pine for each other, but never at the same time. They can never mutually like each other. Otherwise, the writing gods will kill you where you stand. Option B is gonna be our tall, dark, and handsome. He may be pale, but in a luminous way, never in a spends too much time behind the computer way. In addition, option B must display four of the following characteristics. Sullen, argumentative, controlling, domineering, outright abusive, sexually aggressive, and murderous, but in a hot way. As you can tell, we are totally setting up our sweet and stable option A for failure. And we always want to steer that vulnerable orphan to the spicier option B. Now, quick note here for all of you supernatural love interest writers. If your supernatural love interest is older than your main character, you have to have that hundred year barrier. 
117, super duper hot. 87, creepy old geezer. Just so you know. Step four. So now that you have pretty much the entire book figured out, time to hit the plot and get that knocked out of the park too. Keeping in mind your audience is 12 to 17, it's really important to make your plot fresh, fun, and exciting. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Let's go with generic good versus generic evil on the edge of a rebellion. I know, you might be thinking, just how many rebellions could the YA world handle? The answer is always at least one more. You also may be wondering, just how much effort do I have to put in to making this overthrowing the government thing? The answer is about as much time as it took you to write the Oscar gown scene, like five minutes. So you might want to mention who the evil person is about 20 to 30 times in the book before you throw that crazy plot twist and you switch all of the good people with the evil and all the evil with the good people. I'm gonna blow their minds, just letting you know. Also, kind of hitting that sympathy thing again, it's very important for your protagonist to feel personally responsible for any aspect of the book related to the war. Your main character's little sister gets in trouble with the government, totally the main character's fault. Someone trips and dies across the kingdom, equally the main character's thought, fault. <laughs> Step five, vaguely inspirational sentences. This is an overlooked but absolutely essential aspect to writing any YA book out there, the inspiration. Before you get too intimidated, don't worry. None of these sentences actually have to mean anything. They just have to kind of, maybe, sort of seem like they mean something if you tilt your head and squint. Your young and impressionable audience won't get it either way. Female empowerment is super in right now, so your clumsily, ugly, skinny, mini orphan needs to be strong and a real go-getter. I recommend giving her catchphrases. And to make sure everyone knows their catchphrases, make sure you say them like four to five times every single chapter. So it really sinks in that she has a catchphrase. Keeping in mind that we have to keep that sympathy rolling in despite your main character being a strong independent woman who don't need no man, except for when she does, you will have to throw in some self-doubt, some crippling anxiety and self-loathing. It might seem like your main character is on the edge of a breakdown as she yo-yos between such extremes, but as long as she's leaning towards one way or another by the end of the book, character development. Now that you have the basics down, time to sit down and write. And write, and write, and write, and write. Honestly, the longer the better, the more spin-offs the better. People tell you they don't care, they're sick of your books, write another quadrilogy. <sighs> Smells like a movie deal. Thank you so much for joining us on how to write a hit YA book in five easy steps. We hope your humbly fool, ugly, bumbling, skinny orphan, but in a hot way, is going to enjoy her journey out into the wilderness where she will never fart, poop, pee, or have her period in front of the hot guy. She doesn't have bodily functions. She's too broken crying unshed tears over her dead parents and slash or the poverty-stricken horrors she's witnessed. And remember, don't forget to cuddle for warm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, if you made it through this whole video, give it a like and a comment. Thank you. <laughs> so I should actually say that I have a huge respect and absolute love for young adult books. I read about five to ten a month and I love them so much. But we have to admit there are some tropes out there that just, they hit you, don't they? <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching and happy reading. Bye!